the focus on uh, the policy and, and politics of it. Um, and the, the challenge that, that I see and that I deal with uh, on a nearly daily basis is that uh, in a lot of cases, the, uh, the technology and the ideas and the, the academics are very far ahead of the, the public understanding and, and agreement who themselves are pretty far ahead of where the politicians and the decision makers are. Um, <laughs> Uh, that, that unfortunately is, is the reality, and I guess I was interested in getting any input on how we translate this uh, and all of the wonderful ideas we've heard this morning and yesterday uh, to the policy makers and the politicians who are, uh, for whom long term means the next two year election cycle. <laughs> so uh, not an easy question, but any input would be great. <laughs> One of the challenges that we each have is our legislature, whether it's state or federal, makes decisions on what knowledge they have. Each of us, as we work with our legislatures, whether they are state or federal, we need to be telling this as a whole story, meaning you might have a specific angle of research or product that you want to move forward but I'm challenging everybody in the federal government to make sure that when they go in to talk about their program, whether it's uh, bridge or pavement, whatever it might be, that they tell the story of how the system, what the system needs. And that is something that um, has been happening consistently over the f last two years on the federal basis. Now, I can't promise comprehension as far as, as, as agreement, but I can tell you that uh, the transportation community is understanding, is getting their message together more clearly than they have in the past. Well, I, I, that's the world I live in, is uh, talking with elected officials, and I'm a gubernatorial appointee, and I, I think a really important part of it is telling stories, developing a political narrative that resonates with the elected officials so like Ronald Reagan they can tell the great anecdote and they can understand what all of us are talking about in some simple story that resonates with them. And it, it, just I'll just do one quick example. Uh, we're having a, we have a freeway in the Portland <coughs> metropolitan area that is just totally congested and it's congested with people that are using the freeway as a local street. And so it doesn't serve uh, an interstate purpose, which is what it's supposed to be doing, because people are using it as a local street because the local government's never built a grid street system, so nobody has any alternative. We, it, it came to light that our agency was in doing this, this evil study of what would happen if we closed the ramps if, during rush hour, if we just closed a bunch of ramps and we're modeling that. And the response, the public response, has just been outrage. They think we're a bunch of idiots. Now, all of you in this room know why we'd be studying this, but they think we're idiots. And I think what we need to, what we need to do is to give the politicians and the elected officials some basic facts, which we were able to do ahead of the breaking of the story. And the county commissioner said, instead of saying this is outrageous, which is what all of his constituents were saying, was saying, we have to get the local traffic off the interstate. And, and so to, you have to, to, to spend the time to develop the stories, to develop the really simple information so that it can be just get the local street off the road, get the local traffic off the road to get people to think about the road a different way. And that's true in all the new technologies, all this new stuff is how can you tell what you have to say in a simple story? I think the, the problem that you indicate is a very serious and very real problem. And it's multiple problems depending on the institutional design depending on the level of government. I think, the, I think that problem exists at the federal level, exists at state level, exists at municipal le levels. It's different really at every level. Let me talk for a second about the municipal level. It's an urban planner, that's where I tend to, tend to focus. I think there are 
three levels of policy reform going from easiest to hardest at the municipal level. The first is essentially knowledge transfer. When, you, when one municipality looks at what others have done, looks at, at better land use planning, land use planning that supports a fuller range of transportation alternatives, and says, oh wait, we could do that too. No, no great disaster happens when you do that. Uh, that's, that's knowledge transfer. It's happening all the time. It's probably not happening fast enough. I think the second level of reform is when the, the uh, prerogatives of the municipality remain in place, but the incentive system changes. The, uh, the example that I love to quote about this is in the San Francisco Bay, uh, Bay Area, the BART system, Bay Area Rapid Transit, uh, has a policy regarding ex uh, BART line extensions. And that is, every, most municipalities in the Bay Area would love to be the site of a next BART station. And BART says to them, well, let's check your land use planning. Are you, are you planning in transit supportive ways? If so, you get, you're higher on the priority list. If, no, if not, if you're tra planning in transit hostile ways for your land uses, you go, you go down on the priority list. Essentially, the message is, listen, you've still got your prerogatives to plan the way you want to plan, but you know what? We have our prerogatives, too, and we're not going to waste our money if you're planning in transit hostile fashions. I think the third and, and toughest nut to crack, the third uh, dimension of policy reform, and the hardest one, is actual power sharing between levels of government. In the United States, we vest planning authority almost exclusively at the municipal level. There are some notable exceptions, and we have people here from Oregon, and Oregon really is a notable exception. Uh, I think that's the direction we ought to be going in other states as well, not usurping the power of the municipality, but insisting that the municipality, after all, which got its land use power from the police power of the state, use that in a way that's, uh, that's consistent with public, state public purposes. Let me, let me add, uh, if, if we look at the last year as an example, uh, billions of dollars have been thrown at businesses and transportation systems, as a matter of fact, by the federal government. And uh, look at how that money has been spent in the last year, uh, for example. And uh, the thing that's kind of destructive about it, and, and if I were on the private sector side, uh, you know, a couple years ago, we were, everybody was fascinated about uh, we're going to have a hydrogen vehicle. And we're going to have a hydrogen economy. We're going to have a hydrogen highway. And, uh, you know, 10 years before that, it was the electric vehicle. The electric vehicle is coming back now. So this fad of the day, or the, you know, we have to really carefully consider, uh, you know, the government doesn't have the answers, and, uh, and sometimes they direct industry, and, and sometimes those decisions are very poor. The stimulus expenditures? Well, I can't say a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, the question was, uh, what's my opinion of the stimulus expenditures? Well, if you look at what some of the money has gone for, uh, it is generally, uh, the good news is it's under local control, typically. And, and many times you see uh, very valuable projects, uh, uh, you know, done in local control. If you look at some of the stimulus funding that I got a chance to review and participated in large groups to decide where that money should go, um, it's uh, politics. And the lady uh, suggested that politics have, has a lot to do with what gets done and what's, what businesses profit. And that's the reality. I just want to comment on the uh, investment, we, the huge investment we put into our current system. And uh, as I said before, we have this dilemma where we can't actually, we don't really know what's going on out there very much. So we can't measure the benefits of a lot of the investments we've, we're making and we've made in the past. Gail mentioned, you know, her dilemma of should, should I put ITS in or should I put another lane or whatever. But until we have ITS, then we can't actually measure benefits of any of these projects. So. Uh, that seems like a, like a good first step to really, and I think that is going to be a focus of the upcoming highway bill, to try and get some more measurement. But basically, that, that huge system we, highway system we have uh, only has a very small percentage, um, less than 10%, where we can actually see what's going on and we have good data. Uh, 